last 24 hours, we have identified 3,527 3, new cases of COVID-19 and completed about 11,000 tests. Our positivity rate is about 33%. Sadly, eight new deaths have been reported to Alberta Health over the last 24 hours. These individuals were between the ages of 56 and 93 and leave behind family, friends and communities. My thoughts are with their loved ones and anyone else who's grieving a loss right now, no matter the cause. Each life lost to this virus reminds us that COVID-19 still presents a real and present threat in our province. As our hospitalizations rise in this fifth wave, I'm hearing questions about the vaccination status of patients being hospitalized because of COVID-19. It's important for anyone reviewing hospitalization numbers in the province by vaccination status to remember that the number of vaccinated people in Alberta is many, many times higher than the number of unvaccinated people. With the exponential spread of Omicron, more people are getting sick than at any other point in the pandemic. So it is not surprising to see an increase of hospitalizations, even in some who have been partially or fully immunized. However, as the data shows, immunized individuals are at much less risk of getting severely ill. Currently with Omicron, we are seeing an overall inpatient occupancy increase in most areas of the province. And while we still have capacity with our existing beds, we are now working hard to increase the capacity even further. We have added an additional 278 net surge inpatient hospital beds, and we have repurposed 883 existing beds so that they can be used for patients with COVID as needed. This does not include ICU beds or specialty beds. And while patient numbers are fluid, there are currently 5,334 non-ICU patients in these acute care hospital beds. That means that provincially, non-ICU inpatient occupancy, including additional surge beds, is currently at 89%. And without the additional surge spaces, provincial ICU occupancy would be at 93%. So we are taking measures to increase capacity while also ensuring we have the staff and resources to meet that demand. We proactively planned for a contingency acute care inpatient spaces in both Edmonton and Calgary in earlier waves. And you've heard the Premier call these as pandemic response units. We received funding from the government of Alberta to retrofit shelf spaces we had at South Health Campus in Calgary and the Edmonton K Clinic. These spaces are available when required on an urgent basis, contingent obviously on staffing availability. And in the incoming days, we will be activating some of these beds. I know a lot of people are saying to me, and to the government, rightly, understandably, you know, when are we going to get out of this? You, get, you see the United Kingdom um, that is uh, dropping almost all of its uh, COVID restrictions or will do so shortly. Um, Scott, the, gov the Scottish government, so that was the U UK government for purposes of England. Uh, the Scottish government announced seeing that they, they believe they went too far in some of their policies but did not help to diminish spread. Um, Spain and Portugal take, uh, are talking about a radical change in, in approach. Uh, other jurisdictions doing the same thing. So we're being asked, well, when, when do all of these restrictions and measures come to an end? And my answer is uh, hopefully soon, but we have to get past this Omicron. We've not yet reached the peak in hospitalizations. We have to support our healthcare workers. So if, if you're frustrated, I get it. Um, I, we, are, we are all frustrated and tired of this thing, sick and tired of it. But please, in your frustration, think about the hospital workers who day by day are seeing more patients show up. They are um, working uh, incredibly hard uh, to, to keep people safe, uh, to save lives. And so let's be mindful of them. Um, but in the, in the long, in the midterm, I, I did see a really interesting uh, editorial published this week in the Lancet, the prestigious uh, British medical journal. And I just want to quote from this from uh, Christopher Murray quotes, the impacts of future SARS-CoV-2 transmission on health will be less in the future. A, a broad previous exposure to the virus regularly adapted vaccines to new antigens or variants, the advent of antivirals and the knowledge that the vulnerable can protect themselves, uh, uh, ensuring that future waves uh, will be much less impactful. COVID-19 will become another recurrent disease the health system and societies will have to manage. For example, the death toll from Omicron seems to be similar in most countries to the level of a bad influenza season in Northern 
hemisphere countries. After the Omicron wave, COVID-19 will return, but the pandemic will not. I certainly hope that The Lancet is right about that. We're not there yet. Uh, and so folks, just please continue to be diligent, be careful, think of our healthcare workers, uh, and let's just get through this.